Thank you for joining us virtually. We're at the Dole Institute of Politics. So my name is Sarah Stacy. I'm Director of Programs and Student Affairs. And I also was a student here at the Dole Institute. Um, I was in our student advisory board and worked here when I was an undergrad. So thank you for joining us. And today's program is brought to you in partnership with the KU's Career Center. So the, t the goal of today's program is for current KU students to learn from our panelists about what their experiences from their DC internships were like, and hopefully we'll give you some um, good advice. So I'm so happy to be joined by our panelists. They're all connected because they were SAB students and while they're at KU. And then I'm also delighted to be joined by Wendy Shoemaker of the Career Center. So Wendy, would you like to say a few words? Sure, no problem. Uh, thank you, Sarah. I'm so delighted to be working with you and with the Dole Institute again. And this is our fourth program collaborating with the Dole Institute to uh, talk about careers in public service and politics. And the reason why we keep on coming back to this topic is because students are interested in these careers, but they're also interested in interning in DC. So this is a great topic, and I'm really interested to hear what our panelists have to say today. Um, the Dole Institute has such great resources, including their alumni. Uh, later on, toward the end of the program, we'll be highlighting a few of those resources for finding and funding those uh, DC area internships. That sounds great, Wendy. And uh, just so you know how we'll structure today, um, when we ask our panel's questions, um, Wendy and I will alternate. And then if we can just go in the same order, um, Amanda, Eric, Mandy, and then Reina, that way we don't accidentally interrupt with us because we're coming in from different locations. For anyone watching virtually, you can send questions to dolequestions at ku.edu. If you're watching on a replay and you um, still have a question, feel free to ask it and I will direct it after the fact to either Wendy or one of our panelists. Um, it also, if you see me on my phone, it's just because I'm checking our inbox. Um, let's just start with some introductions. So starting with Amanda, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and make sure to include what you studied at KU and your involvement at, um, in the Dole Institute Student Advisory Board? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda Peterson. I graduated from KU in 2015, and I studied economics and political science. While I was at KU, I first came to the Dole Institute when I was a senior in high school, and it was part of my circle of friends and the, the group that I was involved with um, all throughout my four years as an undergrad, and I've been able to stay connected. I live in Lawrence. I've been able to stay connected since then. Um, while I was at the Dole Institute, my favorite things to do were to be involved in voter registration drives. I also worked as a semester um, as a student events assistant, and I was really involved in the mentorship program. Uh, and I'm actually still in touch with my Dole Institute mentor today. So it is terrific to be here. Awesome. Eric? Great. Great. Uh, so good to be here uh, with everyone. Uh, I appreciate the Dole Institute. Um, the Dole Institute did so many things for me during my undergraduate time at KU. And uh, I studied political science and public administration uh, with a minor in business. And uh, I worked at the Dole Institute and um, was a part of the SAV. I think I showed up to almost every event possible. Uh, and, and truly, I think with the Dole Institute, it's so unique to have so many different speakers come to the university campus and share their thoughts and views with you. Um, that truly, it was hard for me to miss any uh, Dole Institute event. And uh, similar to Amanda, the voter registration drives, I think, were the most fun uh, to me. And then uh, just getting together with the Dole SAV group was always a great time. Thanks. I'll also throw in that Eric was my first ever student intern when I came here, and he was amazing. So thank you, Eric, for that. Mandy? Uh, I love being part of the Dole Institute. I actually didn't join until later in college, uh, my sophomore, junior year, and got really involved. I was the marketing and digital intern. And then I went on to be the SAB coordinator, which is a fantastic experience. 
Um, at KU, I majored in political science and minored in Slavic language and literature and international global studies. Um, and that was a great trio of majors to be involved with the Dole Institute. There are plenty of opportunities to go to events and meet people who were part of all three realms. And then uh, similar to Amanda, I am still in touch with my Dole Institute mentor today. That's great. And Reina? Hi, everyone. I am a senior at KU. I study economics and political science with a focus on the U.S.-China economic relationship. I am a born and raised Kansan, so I've lived in the state my entire life, and my mom and sister both graduated from KU. I have been lucky enough to have two internships in Washington, D.C., first at the State Department and second on the Hill for Representative Sharice Davis. Thanks. Incredible. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from you all. So I'm interested to hear, why did you uh, apply for an internship in D.C.? So starting with Amanda. Absolutely. So I was part of the honors program at KU, and my advisor was Dr. Chris Wiles. If anybody here is part of the engineering department, he's now an assistant dean there. Um, but from the very first time that I visited KU as a, as a high school student, he, he shared that if I wanted to stay political science, really get involved in government, that seeking out the opportunity to intern in D.C. was an incredible one. And that at KU, we are so lucky that as part of a political science degree, we're able to have that internship opportunity and have that count as college credit. So I had had that kind of in my head as something that I wanted to do. My first two years at KU, I was a member of the debate team, and so um, had that, that took up most of my time. But my junior year, I decided that I wanted to do other things and decided that I really wanted to find my way uh, to D.C. So I had always heard about um, D.C. internships. I've always been interested in policy and politics, and so being able to go to Capitol Hill and be able to... Uh, really understand how policy gets made was very helpful for me. It was also a really helpful experience for me to go um, to D.C. to understand whether I wanted to live there or whether I wanted to move back home to Kansas to work on policy here. So, Thank you. Eric? Yeah, uh, I think in my head I have always knew that I wanted to end up in Washington, D.C., so I figured the best way uh, – to end up here would be interning here in the summers. And so uh, first opportunity I had, uh, I kind of took it. Um, and I definitely want to talk about this more, but the Dole Institute was really the reason why I was able to go out to Washington, D.C. Uh, and get my first internship here. But, um, you know, I was always interested in the policy aspect, the politics, um, and just knew D.C. was the place to be. And I think all the amazing connections you make while you're out here, uh, it was definitely a driver in wanting to come out here. Um, and then just talking to some of the older SAB members at the time, um, hearing about their experiences in Washington, D.C., what they were able to learn through their internships uh, also piqued my interest. Thank you, Eric. So, Andy, why were you interested in applying for an internship in D.C.? So the summer I spent in D.C. actually has an interesting Dole Institute connection because that's how I got connected to the Dole Institute. I had been working on political campaigns in Kansas, and I worked in the State House um, through the end of high school and into college and ended up, after the campaign cycle, I went up to D.C. for a Hill internship just out of curiosity. I had never spent a lot of time in the city, and I had always been interested in going back. And uh, during my... Capitol Hill internship, I actually connected with the Dole Institute at a KU alumni event and got plugged in. And that's how I ended up applying for the internship and joining the student advisory board. Um, and then on another sort of more random note, when I was headed to DC for my first internship, I was at a networking event and got connected with somebody who was on the, who ran the National Down Syndrome Society and after talking to her about some personal relationships I had there, I ended up last minute getting an internship with them to follow my Capitol Hill internship. So great experience. And I yeah, look forward to talking more about it. Awesome. Can't wait to hear about it. So uh, we've heard from three alumni. So let's hear from a current student, uh, Raina, who's done quite a, uh, at least two internships. So Raina, why were you interested in uh, applying for an internship in D.C.? 
Totally, yeah. There were a few motivating factors, but I think first and foremost is my general fascination and interest in the political world. Similar to Amanda, I was involved in policy debate, and that really helped facilitate my general interest in politics, paying attention to what was happening on the Hill on a weekly basis. And I do see myself working in the political space or in D.C. in the future, so I kind of wanted a glimpse of what that would look like for a summer. Nice, thank you. Okay, and now I have a kind of multi-part question. Um, this is really to help the current KU students. Were there any resources on campus that assisted you when you were applying? So, of course, share if the Dole Institute or Career Center helped, or anyone else as well. And um, could you just give some tips uh, to students with the application process? Um, so, Amanda? Absolutely. So, I really appreciated that I was working at the Dole Institute this semester that I was applying for internships, um, the, the fall semester of my junior year. And I remember the conversations that I was having with Bill Lacey and Barbara Ballard about the types of internships maybe that I wanted to do or the places that I might want to work. Um, the advice that I ha would have would be to cast a really wide net, especially, well, for being able to, to recognize that there are a lot of people who are trying to go to D.C. And so being able to apply to a lot of different organizations was helpful for me um, to be able to eventually be able to connect with one that was a good fit for me. So I remember having lots of conversations about different organizations, really the, um, the support and the encouragement to keep applying and to um, make sure to, to just keep at the process because it was a little bit daunting to get started was really helpful. I also would um, really be, be remiss if I didn't mention that the Dole Institute had financial support that was available. As I was going back through my emails last night to think about some of the things that I worked on during my internship, I came across an email exchange that I had with um, one of the friends of the Dole Institute who actually funded and supported the scholarship that I received. And so that kind of support and assistance was really helpful when trying to think about how to make, um, make this a possibility for my college experience. That's great. Eric? Yeah, so um, I actually got my first internship out in Washington, D.C. Uh, when I was talking to a guest at the Dole Institute, um, she was there for a discussion group event, and uh, we were just chatting beforehand, and she was asking what my goals were and, and things like that, and I said, well, my main goal right now is to intern in D.C. I said, you know, I'm interested in a lot of different issues. Um, I don't really care where I go. Uh, I just know I want to be out in Washington, D.C. this summer. And she uh, looked at me and was like, well, you know, we actually have an opening at our firm uh, for an intern spot. Why don't you uh, send me your resume and uh, let's go from there. And uh, I actually ended up spending two summers uh, at that firm. Uh, so it was a great experience. I don't think I would be where I am today without that internship experience. Uh, and it all kind of just started from that one conversation uh, at the Dole. I, I guess what I'll add for advice, because I know it always doesn't happen that way, um, similar to Amanda, casting a very wide net uh, is definitely very beneficial because you have a lot of people applying for internships out in D.C., especially in the summer term. Uh, I'll also add, too, that uh, using your resources, if you have any connections to folks who are out in D.C., um, that is definitely a really helpful way to get kind of your foot in the door. You know, reaching out to someone who maybe graduated a year before you or something like that, uh, just having folks uh, who work in D.C. look over your resume. Um, I know as, you know, some of the SAB graduates get older in their careers, um, they're actually the ones looking at resumes and making hiring decisions. So even if that place doesn't have an opening, having someone who's in that position looking at your resume and offering feedback can also be another way to uh, make you a more attractive candidate. Thanks. Mandy? Yeah, as far as uh, help in getting out there, I think that um, you know, I was also looking for a political science credit, and so I worked with my professor and my counselor to find the way to make that work and adapt to that credit to the internship that I was doing, um, talking to other students on how they did that and the approach they took in, in performing that task was helpful. 
Um, and then similar to what Eric was saying, it's a, it's actually a really small world, smaller than you think. And people at KU are very well connected and very interested in helping young students who are interested in pursuing a career that, that they hadn't thought of before or that might seem out of reach. In fact, it was uh, a friend of mine at KU whose family lived in D.C. that helped me get housing here for the summer. And so you never know what you're going to come across in, in, on campus and in your friend group. So just networking and talking to people and being willing to put yourself out there and send a resume like Eric did or, or talk to friends and see who has a connection. That's great. Raina? Yeah, um, I will mostly just echo kind of what the others have said because I think they all just gave really, really good advice. Um, so first, just take advantage of the resources offered at the university, especially the Career Center. Our advisors and people there are so knowledgeable and can help you get started with building your network, refining your resume, and helping you with your interview. Um, I wish I would have been personally more proactive about building my network and reaching out beyond KU alumni um, because a strong network can open up a million doors for you. Um, I think on that point of networking, it's really important and I would personally emphasize to just make sure you're showing genuine interest in the people you're talking with. You don't want the relationship to be transactional at all, but rather you want to just really enjoy get, getting to know other people. And this, yes, will require you to put yourself out there and can be intimidating, but it, the potential outcomes and the people you can meet through it um, are totally worth it. Thank you, everyone. Those are great and interesting uh, answers. And so. Something I get asked a lot from students as they're thinking about intern interning in D.C. is the issue of housing. So let's turn our attention to thinking about affordable housing and how did you find affordable housing accommodations um, for your internship? Let's start with that and I have a follow-up question after that. So let's start with uh, Amanda. Absolutely. So in terms of housing, when I was going through the program, the uh, KU Political Science Department had housing that um, the interns who are participating were required to live in. And so that made it pretty straightforward. Um, I would I know that the city has changed a lot in the 10 years since I've been there. And so I hope that uh, maybe others who are there more recently have some tips on maybe good neighborhoods or or opportunities to, to find good housing. <laughs> And if I can just follow up with that, do you have any tips for uh, how to navigate DC on a student budget? Yes. Um, so again, when, when I was there, uh, Uber and Lyft were uh, very early on in existing, but I would really recommend getting familiar with both the Metro, the subway system, and the bus. I found it really useful to be able to use both to get around the city. Um, and I found it to be a really easy public transit system to learn, especially if you're going to have um, roommates or others to spend your first couple of days there just riding around and understanding how they work is a great thing to do. I'd also really recommend it's easy, especially when you're living away from home and when you have new uh, new coworkers and, and a new environment to just go out to eat all the time. Being able to grocery shop and be able to take in breakfast and lunch to work uh, can really help save a lot of money because the um, the food in D.C. certainly felt more expensive than it did at home when I was there. No doubt. Thank you. Eric, how did you find affordable housing and, and tips for uh, navigating D.C. on a street budget? Well, unfortunately, I'm still searching for affordable housing. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, there, there's a lot of good resources out there. Um, I know, you know, George Washington University opens their dorms up. Uh, that's not, it, it's still an expensive option. There's also Facebook, housing Facebook groups where people uh, post that they need a sublet for the summer and things like that. So it, it's a tough question. You almost have to be pretty creative. Uh, kind of going back to uh, a point made earlier, you do want to use your network of folks who, uh, if you do know anyone who lives out in D.C., and uh, if you're listening to the program, Sarah can connect uh, you with me or anyone else. Um, but like folks will hear about, you know, uh, people who knew, need roommates, uh, people who are looking for sublets and things like that. Uh, so it, it is a bit more difficult than, you know, anywhere else, I would say. But just kind of thinking outside the box, uh, using your, your network um, and trying to use all the resources available. And then uh, in terms of navigating DC on a budget, I will say making a budget is really helpful and that's a skill that you'll use in your life. 
uh, for the rest of your life, honestly. Uh, I mean, you need to look at how much you're going to spend on housing, how much that leaves you, and really send it like a daily and a weekly budget. And um, kind of what Amanda talked about, really making sure you pack lunches because it can get expensive if you're going out to lunch every day. I mean, that's like $15 um, just for a simple meal, honestly. And then uh, I know this is tough, but sometimes limiting how many times uh, you go out for coffee, you know, making a routine where, you know, you get coffee in the office maybe a few days and then uh, go grab coffee uh, some other days and just being a little creative and definitely utilizing the public transit here uh, is definitely helpful. Thank you, Eric. Danny. Yeah, so like Eric said, being creative honestly is the trick. Um, housing in D.C. is incredibly expensive. It's just the reality of it. But there are ways to get around that. As I mentioned earlier, I had a friend whose family was up here, so I was very lucky in that regard that I had the opportunity to stay with them. But there are other options. There's Wish Housing, it's called. Um, I never lived in that, but I have friends who have, and it's just a discount housing for interns. There are, you know, this is where the network comes in handy, talking to friends and family, see if anyone has connections out here or can recommend places that you may not have thought of. Doing some heavy online research can typically yield some results. Uh, talking to your intern coordinator or whoever is offering you the internship is often helpful. They can recommend either parts of town or people they know or other, you know, if their office has an in with a certain group that has housing, you know, you never know what's going to be available unless you look, but you have to take the time to look. Uh, and I would very much, very much to recommend doing that. As far as uh, intern salary and, and intern budgeting, I'm a social butterfly, so sometimes it makes it hard to not want to be out and about. And this does typically apply more to Capitol Hill interns, but it exists all around. DC is a city that runs on receptions and events. And so if you can find a way to get in there, which if you're on Capitol Hill, you're automatically in for it. But uh, you know, we always used to joke that our dinners and lunches would come from receptions, and that's true. That's the case on Capitol Hill especially. But if you can find a way to attend receptions and, you know, reception hop, normally there'll be three, four, five, six, seven a night on Capitol Hill, especially if you're a summer intern. So take advantage of those. There's a lot of events of free food on the Hill and in D.C. in general. So just taking time to do the research, find what's happening, uh, make a budget, stick to it, but don't limit yourself on what you may or may not be able to do because there's always something happening in the city that you can typically find a way into. Yes. Um, so in terms of housing, the first summer I was personally lucky to know people that knew people and we found some American University students that were subletting their apartment for this summer. But even if you don't know anyone, there are still a lot of options like others have said. Get on Facebook, especially and join Washington DC housing, George Washington and Georgetown housing groups. There are a lot of posts from college students. Um, that go to those universities and are looking to sublease their apartment or house for the summer. Um, so those are great options. Um, and yes, it will definitely get pricey. So that's where financial assistance can play a helpful role, um, as well as a potential stipend from your employer. Um, and more tips for a student, navigating a student budget is um, just some ideas that others have said. Take advantage of those Hill events for sure. I definitely did this um, last summer. Um, and another thing I would say is go grocery shopping and make meals with your roommates instead of eating out all the time because DC food, quite expensive. You're not going to get the same prices that you do in Kansas. Um, so put in the effort to make yourself food. Um, and another thing is try to use the metro or walk instead of Ubering as your main form of transportation. Um, DC is a beautiful city to so just walk around. So if you use your feet instead of your wallet um, for that kind of transportation, I think that would be a good good way to budget and save some money. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of you. You know, it strikes me that all the advice that you've given uh, is good advice just in general, uh, whether you live in Lawrence or in D.C. So, thank you. Yeah, me and Wendy are just shaking our heads yes. over here because <laughs> all the advice you've given so far has been great. I'll also throw out the political science has a long-standing program for spring. So for financial assistance, you do need to be a political science major, but you can join the program even if you're not a political science major. So if you want to be connected there, just shoot me an email and I'll connect you with the organizer of that program. 
All right, um, so next, could you all talk about what you're doing now? And um, if you could connect, how did your internship help you in figuring out your long-term goals? Amanda, can you start us off again? So since I graduated from college, I've been working in state level policy and policymaking. And I don't think that I would have figured out that that's what I want to do if it had not been for my DC internship. So for my first couple of years of college, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do after college. I knew that I really enjoyed, um, as I said, policy and policymaking, um, had just always been interested in that since I was a little kid. But I was more interested in the foreign policy side of things. And it wasn't until the summer in between my sophomore and junior year that I spent studying abroad that I realized that um, I was really homesick as, as I was studying Arabic in Jordan. And probably if I was really homesick for a summer, then signing up for a career path where I might be living abroad for big chunks of time uh, might not be the best choice for me. So as I was applying for internships in Washington, D.C., I was really drawing on some of the interests that I'd had at the Dole Institute. I mentioned earlier that I'd been really involved in voter registration. And while I was at KU, the state of Kansas passed some laws that made it much more difficult for college students specifically to register. So we went from registering hundreds of college students a year to maybe registering a dozen who were able to collect the necessary paperwork that they needed. That really got me interested in state policy and what was happening in Topeka. And so I wanted to seek out an opportunity where I'd be able to work on those kinds of issues. And I was really fortunate to be able to get connected and, and receive an internship at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. They're a think tank that has been around since the early 80s, and they have a team that is specifically devoted to helping states make smart tax and budget decisions that can then in turn allow them to support things like higher education and programs that support kids and families, which were all things that I cared deeply about. So the semester that I was in DC was one where I was able to see people who were really passionate about the work that they were doing. I was able to learn a lot about the kinds of policy decisions that states can make to um, help create and help support uh, really thriving families and, and flourishing economies. And it was incredible to be able to do that work and then to be able to come home to Kansas. And my first job out of college actually was working for uh, Kansas Action for Children, which is the state affiliate of the national network that I was supporting while I was with the team in DC. So it really was a chance to see at a national level what a lot of different states were working on and then to get to come home to my home state to be able to do that kind of work. Um, in terms of what I'm doing now, I worked at Kansas Action for Children for several years. I got my master's degree in public administration while I was there. And then I had the chance to come over to the State Department of Education, so be on the state agency side instead of doing advocacy and lobbying work. And I've been here for five and a half years administering preschool and early childhood programs for the state. So it is a, a real full circle kind of opportunity, not something that I envisioned when I got started in DC in 2014, but uh, something that I'm really satisfied with and very happy that I ended up in. That's incredible. Eric. Yeah, so uh, my first internship in Washington, DC was at a tax and trade focused lobbying firm. Uh, and that was kind of an area that I had no real prior knowledge of. I had spent the summer before that working uh, for a senator's uh, district office. So I kind of got to see that side of things. And then after my first summer interning at uh, the lobbying firm, I was really interested in kind of the intersection of business and government. And that is what piqued my interest in getting a business minor. Um, and then led me, uh, honestly, to where I am now at Capitol Hill Consulting Group. Uh, I'm the legislative director here, and uh, I've been here about three years. Uh, and just kind of like tracking legislation, watching hearings, um, you know, helping our clients uh, get meetings and, you know, uh, fulfill their advocacy and legislative goals is something that I really enjoy and um, I think kind of just goes back to the nice thing about an internship is you don't have to commit that much. I mean, it's a few months 
but you really get to learn if you have an interest in that sector or that career area. So had I never kind of taken that leap of faith to say, you know, I don't know much about this industry, um, you know, maybe I should see what it's like. I would, don't think I would be where I am today. And so I think that's something that's just a good lesson, you know, even if you think, oh, I might be interested in this field, uh, that's what internships are for. Um, you know, it gets you experience, but also it'll, tells you early on if you absolutely love the sector or you absolutely hate it. So um, I'm definitely grateful that uh, I was able to take that leap and end up where I am now. So the two internships that I did my summer in D.C. were very different. I did some time on Capitol Hill, and then I went for, to intern for the National Down Syndrome Society. And there were things that I loved about both and things that I thought maybe weren't for me in the long run for both. Um, but there were, aside from just the typical, or like the standard policy and substantive part of both internships, there's something that I something that I took from both was that the people that you work with as an intern and what you watch and observe in an office as an intern can make a really big difference in how you go forward as a leader and as an employee and as someone who's interested in pursuing a career. So learning and watching what you want to emulate from the people in the office, what you don't want to emulate, leadership that you admire, leadership that you may not admire as much, things that you're interested in, sort of what what worlds exist that you never thought of. I mean, there are jobs that I saw on the Hill and at NDSS that I would have never thought was a job, um, whether it was people I was working directly with or people that I saw come into the office to meet with my colleagues. So you just never know what you're going to see, and that's something that I think is really important. And that kind of led me to where I am today. Um, so I was started doing political fundraising uh, and grassroots work in Kansas and have since brought that to D.C., I do political fundraising, and I research issues that donors are interested in, uh, specifically for my organization. I work for Heritage Action, which is the political action partner of the Heritage Foundation in Washington. Great, Nancy. And now, Raina, I know you haven't graduated yet, and you're a senior, but maybe you can yes. speculate a little bit on how those internships have influenced what you'll do next. Totally, yeah. So... Like Sarah said, unlike everyone else, I am still finishing up my last semester of school at KU, but I really do think my internships played an important role in me coming to kind of just a better understanding of the job market and what opportunities exist in terms of either the private or the public sphere. And personally, I'm quite positive I want to move to a bigger city, whether that's D.C. or New York City. Um, but I want to move out um, to the bigger city. I love Kansas, but... I need, I need to be in a bigger city, unfortunately. Um, and I want to do something in the political or research-related field. I really enjoyed working at the State Department and in the Office of Investment Affairs because it was a great intersection of politics and economics. So that is something I could see myself doing in the future, as well as other public service opportunities. But overall, my internships were really helpful in me meeting other people that were doing different internships at the time. So I got a glimpse into what their offices looked like. Um, and I just generally know I want to move out there and I want to do something, um, in the political space. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You know, it strikes me as I'm listening to your, uh, internship experiences, how, uh, rich and varied, you know, your experiences have been in D.C. And I, I, I think the students who are watching this are probably thinking, how do I get started? And, uh, and so, you know, the, the, the tales that you're portraying about how you got started, how you found these experiences are really uh, interesting and, and the benefits to your long-term career projection and what you learned. So I want you to, to now tell us a little bit about some of the skills that you gained through this experience. And so I know you've gained many. And so in particular, could you highlight you know, one to two to three professional skills that you have found particularly helpful uh, through your internship experiences? And again, we'll start with Amanda. I love what Mandy said about being able to be a sponge and really take the opportunity to be embedded in an organization as an employee for a full semester to really just observe how an organization and a workplace works. 
Uh, I think that for me, the piece that I still use the most as a manager and as somebody who is leading a team that's within a bigger organization is some of those early lessons about just the, the basic nuts and bolts of how to run a staff meeting or how to uh, plan and then execute on a project. So being able to just be that sponge and be able to be willing to speak up and say, hey, I know that we're working on this project or that we are beginning something new. I'm really interested in that and I would love to join and help out in any way or take notes that's something that I know that my supervisors appreciated at the time. That's something that I now appreciate as somebody who supervises interns and, and does that kind of work. So being able to be thinking about not just the individual content that you're developing or the individual skills that you're honing, but also really taking time to reflect on the bigger organization and thinking about questions like what kind of work do I want to be doing or what kind of organization do I want to be working in is really important. Some of the pieces um, as I was an intern that have been really helpful for me included becoming a much stronger writer. I was lucky to have my cubicle that was right across the hall from the communications director for our team. And so I got to hear um, a lot of conversations secondhand about how to proofread blog posts or about how to really tighten up articles or op-eds so that they would be more persuasive and get more to the point. And that's something that really helped me shift my writing style from writing essays in college to being able to uh, write things like blog posts or testimony or, or newsletters um, to constituents that um, was more useful for me in my professional life. I also got much, much better at Excel. Um, a lot of what we would do would be pull together different data sets from 50 states to be able to put them together in a uniform format uh, to be able to then use in reports. So. Um, being able to just get very used to having a big project and break it into chunks and be able to get it done with a, a lot of attention to detail uh, was a skill that I used a lot, especially earlier in my career. Thank you, Amanda. So Eric, what skills did you gain from your internship experiences? Yeah, I think uh, one of the most valuable skills was switching from being reactive to proactive. Um, similar to what Mandy was saying, being that sponge when I got to that organization, you know, learning as much as possible, and then kind of making that leap where, you know, I'm not just, you know, being told to do the work, I do the work, and then, we're, then you know, you move on. But then kind of learning to anticipate the needs of folks. Uh, and I think that's when you become really helpful to your uh, supervisor and to uh, the workplace is when you can kind of see, oh, I know, uh, you know, someone's going to need this on Friday. I'm going to start working in, working on it on Tuesday and maybe just have a draft ready for them. Uh, and then similar to what Amanda talked about, I think the different writing style is something that really um, was a hard transition for me, I guess, personally. I think coming from college, it was more focused on essays that, you know, there's a certain length that you have to reach. Um, and having that mindset to, at least in my sector, um, no one wants anything over a page. If you can get it all on one page, that's perfect. Uh, you know, folks don't want to read a 10 page uh, report if they don't have to. And so I think, and every sector is different. So um, that's just how mine operates. And so I think learning the specific writing style for your sector uh, was really beneficial for me uh, during my internship. Uh, and then just learning to ask questions, um, you know, doing the initial research on things so you're not asking a million questions that are super easy to answer, but like not being scared to ask like, hey, could you give me some background on this or can you explain why we do this a certain way? Uh, and I think that really helped me learn uh, and grow as it uh, grow in my career. That's, that's especially questions and when to ask and having the confidence to ask the questions is really good. So Mandy, what skills did you learn in your internship experiences? Yeah, I learned a lot of really tangible skills uh, and things that have carried on in invaluable ways in my career now. Uh, a couple of the most important ones are put everything in writing and document everything. At some point, someone's going to need information or need a conversation that's happened. And if you're just relying on a memory or a phone call, that's just not going to cut it. And so 
documenting ever, everything, keeping note of everything, sending follow-up emails is critical, and being willing to overshare with your manager. Share what you're doing on a daily basis. Document what you're doing and, and let them know that you are working on so many projects or you've taken the ambition and done something new and it might benefit the office. Just don't hesitate to overshare because if you understare, it's, it's, it's not going to end as well. But if you overshare, then you never have to wonder if they, if they don't know what you're doing or they, they're concerned about something that doesn't, they don't need to be concerned about. Those are two big things. And then attention to detail uh, is also part of that. It's critical and just doing something well the first time so it doesn't have to be done a second time. Right on. Thank you, Mandy. So, Raina, uh, uh, what skills have you had two internships? What skills yeah. have you learned in your experiences? My top three, I'll say, one, strong communication skills, being able to talk to my bosses and my other the other people that were in my offices. Um, two, interpersonal skills. And three, as many others have said, writing abilities. Um, each workplace and organization has different norms and expectations. So I was constantly learning new things, whether that was how to draft a memo on a specific investment policy or how to handle constituent concerns. Um, those are just a few examples of the many things that I gained in my internship. Thank you, Raina. Okay. I'll add that Raina is our um, resident networking expert, which will lead into our next question. But first, I want to remind virtual viewers, if you have questions, send them to dolequestions at ku.edu. Um, so on, on the networking point, um, Amanda, could you start by sharing how connections you made at your internship helped you later down the road? And also, do you have any tips for our students on how to network? Well, kudos to Rena. While I was a college student, this was probably the thing that I was most nervous about was being able to meet new people and being able to build that professional network because I wasn't um, I wasn't quite sure what that looked like. And in hindsight, some of the things that I did that were really helpful were first and foremost, just building excellent relationships and leaving an excellent impression with the people who I were working with. Who I was working with. So being able to approach every task and really try to go above and beyond meant that I had people who I was working with on a day-to-day -day basis who were impressed by my work. And something that is really helpful that I'd highly recommend is keeping a list of some of the things that you're most proud of from your internship, maybe the bullet points that you'll eventually hope to add to your resume and sharing that with your uh, supervisor or your boss right before you leave so that they've got that there documented in writing so that they can uh, provide a reference for you perhaps in the future if you ask them to do that. It is really handy um, to be able to have that to jog your memory in a couple of years when you're in the seat of somebody who is giving the reference. So being able to keep track of those pieces to be able to document your strengths I think are really helpful. And I also think that being able to um, really just connect authentically with the other people in your organization, being able to share your interests and be able to let them know um, when you are interested in their work or have questions about what they're doing. In my experience, people are more than happy for you to drop by with uh, some coffee from the, the office coffee machine and be able to sit for a couple of minutes and understand a little bit more about something that they mentioned in a staff meeting or another project that they're working on. So being able to build those kinds of relationships with the others who are working in your organization is helpful. And then also just making friends with the other interns who are in your program or the other interns from KU who are in the city at the same time as you are. You know, you, you might not realize it now, but in five or 10 or 15 years, that cohort of people, as I think about who I interned with, they're all doing really incredible things now. And so being able to have that um, network of people who I know, who uh, I can reach out to if I've got questions about their work or just to say hi has been something that's really helpful for me. That's great advice. I could use, I can use all, all the advice that's been given so far, even today, too. Um, all right. Uh, oh, Eric, sorry. Forgot the order for a second. <laughs> um, I think uh, a few things, but one, just making sure that you have one place where um, you have all the uh, information of folks that you've been networking with. 
Uh, I mean, it's super easy to just have uh, that in your phone contacts, but make sure you save their email uh, to the contact, not just their number, uh, just so you don't have to go digging in your email or searching around for their email. Um, and then I will say networking is a two-way street. Um, and I know when you are, you know, maybe 19 or 20, you don't think you can offer that much to someone who maybe is uh, a bit older and further along in their careers, but you never know. So um, just being sure that you can at least offer to uh, someone you're networking with, like, is there anything I can do? Um, you know, and sometimes folks appreciate a younger perspective on things. Um, you know, they may need to reach back out to you and say, hey, we actually have an opening for internships. Do you know anyone? So just uh, keep in the back of your mind that it is a two-way street um, and offering to be a resource as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think also just being respectful of people's time, you know, sending a thank you email or even a thank you note uh, goes a long way. I mean, I think people don't realize how rare it is to get something in the mail uh, saying, hey, thanks for taking the time to get coffee with me, um, or, if, you know, thanks for being a reference for me or something like that. You know, if someone's going out on a limb and, you know, taking time out of their day to meet with you, just at least acknowledging that through an email or a note or something like that uh, is just something that folks will remember later on. Excellent advice. Nancy? Yeah, networking has been really important to me um, on a personal level and on a professional level. It's a very small world, as I mentioned before. You never know who knows somebody else, um, and that can be extremely beneficial to you if you show up and you work with integrity and you do the job well and you care, um, or it might not if you you know don't want to don't want to perform well. So I think um, I went to a lot of events in college and high school and in DC during my internship. And I would routinely ask for business cards. And I think one of the most important things that I did with that was I would immediately follow up either the night of an event or the day after. And it can be a very simple follow up. It can say, you know, it was great meeting you. Enjoyed talking to you about X, Y, and Z. And would love to buy you lunch or coffee sometime if you're interested. It's very simple, but it opens the door to a whole new realm that you would never have known about otherwise. And you'll be surprised by how many successful and established people uh, are interested in spending time and taking time to talk to you if you're a young, ambitious person. So don't ever underestimate the opportunities that might exist for you. I think remaining humble. Uh, you may know a lot about a topic, but this is somebody who's probably been in a career field for a lot longer than you have. So be sure that you can show up and have a conversation with them. Uh, and it'll open a lot of doors for you. It did for me, and it, I think it, the, the opportunities are endless. Agreed. And Raina, because I know you, can you also, in this answer, share how you use uh, LinkedIn with your networking? Yeah, definitely. So like Sarah said, networking has kind of turned into one of my favorite pastimes, strangely enough. Um, but use LinkedIn. I'm always on LinkedIn and would totally recommend it. You can optimize your search through various filters, including ones to select KU alumni. Um, you can filter using location as well. So if you know you want to be in DC, um, you can create that location as a custom filter. Um, and for my personal journey, they have been immensely helpful um, with my career aspirations and have just turned into great mentors. Um, they can help put in a good word for you or provide a reference, um, great resources for advice. Um, and yeah, I really hope they can help me as I navigate this job journey and job search that I'm on right now. Thank you, Raina. So, um, I think Sarah's going to check to see if there's any questions. So while we finish up, I'm going to ask the, the panelists, you know, what do you know now that you wish you would have known, uh, back then or when you were an intern? So my first experience in supervising an intern was a couple of years after I graduated college, and that was a really eye-opening experience for me. I don't think that I appreciated as much when I was on the intern side of things how, how much work it is as a supervisor or a manager to really design a meaningful internship experience and be able to orient somebody and then have them be there for just a couple of months and then have them leave. And so the advice that I would give would be to... Um, 
really have a sense of perhaps what some of your your strengths are or what some of the things that you hope to get from an internship are so that as you are visiting uh, with your supervisor or as you're introducing yourself to your team, obviously you want to be open to contributing in whatever way is helpful for the team. But it's also really useful to be able to say something like, you know, I'm really trying to become a better writer. And so if we have any opportunities for me to do a first draft of written materials, I'd absolutely love the chance to do that and get feedback. Or being able to say if there's a particular topic that you want to learn about, letting people know that. So that then if I am somebody who's on the team and I am already working on that or I um, have a meeting that's coming up, it might be that I don't have any specific work for an intern to do, but I can invite them along to shadow um, we can have good conversation on the way there and the way back, and that can be a good learning opportunity for them. So in my experience, those kinds of um, ha having people who come in with a little bit of a sense of what they're hoping to accomplish can make it easier to develop early on an internship experience that's meaningful for both the organization and the intern. Thank you, Amanda. So Eric. Yeah, I think uh, something that is that's important is finding a way to be busy, um, even if there's nothing assigned to you from your supervisor. Uh, I know sometimes with internship programs, folks can get really busy, you know, your supervisor might be underwater, and so just finding a way to be helpful without, you know, having a specific task assigned to you, I think is something that uh, can be beneficial. And then the other thing is, is always having a notepad and always writing down uh, things when, you know, your boss is giving you an assignment or, you know, if someone is giving you background or a briefing on a certain issue, uh, just being sure to write that all down. One, it's good to have for your notes and you can go back and reference it. And two, it shows that you're serious and that you're paying attention. Um, and I think it's just a good skill to have for the rest of your life, honestly. So uh, I definitely wish I knew that before I came to DC, but I'm um, glad I know it now. Yeah, you know, there are, there's a lot that I learned in those internships, but I wish I would have taken advantage of some of the opportunities outside of my internships that existed that I didn't know about. A lot of organizations will host events for interns specifically, uh, even interns that don't work for them. There are events on the Hill that I didn't know about that I wish I would have gone to, uh, parts of town that I wish I would have explored. There's, there's endless opportunities up here, and D.C. really is what you make it, whether you're an intern or you're here full-time for a career. So taking advantage of the opportunities that exist here and doing, you know, taking some time to research what's happening or what's available. I mean, even as easy as getting the event bright or going online and just doing a quick Google search, there are plenty of things happening that I did not take advantage of and wish I would have that I am now, but uh, would have been really fun a few years ago. So. Yes. Um, so while it may seem as if I've got this networking thing on lock, I think I would have told myself to be a little more proactive and open to the people that I was networking with. So yes, KU connections, they're great, but it doesn't hurt to reach out to people outside of the KU sphere because in reality, you can network with anyone and a lot of people um, are willing to give advice and provide assistance regardless if you went to the same university or not. So I would talk to your supervisors and tell them what you're interested in and ask if they know anybody like have any connections at the some of the places you're interested in because that can definitely help you um down the line and expand your network outside of just KU. Thank you so much. That's really rich advice. And I think, you know, a lot of the things that I've heard so far are really applicable to almost any context and situation. And so I really appreciated hearing from you all. So, Sarah, do we have any questions? So we do not have virtual questions. We can ask a couple um, bonus questions of ours, and I'll keep um, the account open in case we get any. And like I said, I'm happy to, after the fact, pass on your questions as well if you want to send those in. If oh, could, go for it. Yeah, if I could just ask a question of the group, because I get this question a lot from students. Um, how did you dress when you were uh, at your internship uh, in D.C.? So I, um, if anybody could share um, that. 
My best advice is to make sure that you have comfortable sho uh, shoes for commuting, especially to and for like to, for, for getting to and from work, especially during the wintertime. D.C. tends to really oversalt their streets. And so if you're wearing nice shoes, um, they might get uh, they might get pretty beaten up pretty quickly. I found that um, I, I was able to just kind of put together a work uniform that I repeated of uh, mostly pencil skirts and cardigans, and that worked well for our office. But being able to know that people appreciate that being an intern is a new, a new experience and that you, you might not be coming in with a huge professional wardrobe um, was definitely something that was helpful. Thank you, Amanda. Um, Eric, Mandy, or, or Raina, what, how did you dress when you were in your, doing your internship in D.C.? Yeah, I think the advice on the shoes is really good. Um, definitely having a pair of commuting shoes and then uh, dress shoes. Uh, is a really good idea, especially you don't want to wear, wear out your dress shoes because you're going to be wearing them a lot, but uh, wearing them on the Metro, one, isn't super comfortable, and two, uh, it's not that great for the dress shoes. Um, I will say, take stock of how the people in your office dress. Um, you know, when you're younger here, you definitely don't want to be super underdressed, uh, if that makes sense. So really, and don't be afraid to ask your supervisor, you know, what the dress code is, if they have any suggestions, because um, you don't want to be left out of a meeting or out of an interaction because um, you're not dressed the part. Uh, and so I think it's important to never, uh, you know, let dress or wardrobe uh, be a disadvantage for you. So I would usually keep a tie with me uh, just in my backpack as like an emergency tie in case... Um, you know, we had a client come in or, you know, if there's something unexpected that came up and I had to dress a little bit nicer and I would keep a blazer at the office. Uh, and so if those options are available to you, I think it's a really good idea just uh, so you can dress for really any occasion. Thank you. Yeah, that's, um, I'll go next. That's really good advice. Uh, for both of you. I think one, my, my personal opinion is that first impressions really matter. So on your first day of your internship, uh, unless it is an explicitly casual office, and even then, frankly, I would show up in a, uh, as, as nice as you could get, a suit, um, a, a blazer, a, whatever you have available. Ladies thrifting, specifically, is a phenomenal way to find uh, professional clothes for a great cost. You can kind of pick and choose where you go there, but most of my work clothes, especially early in my internships, were thrifted. And I had some great pieces for that. I think, like Eric said, having the ability to dress it up really quickly is important. Um, I normally keep about two to three blazers in my office and several pairs of heels in case I need to, to class it up. But I think keeping it professional and mimicking the office is important, especially if you're somewhere like Capitol Hill, where uh, you know they have in-session weeks and out-of-session weeks, and in-session is dressier. But you never know in those out of session weeks if you're going to have something pop up that you need to look professional for. And frankly, people take you as seriously as you present yourself. And so while I know some of those ideas seem a little antiquated, it still is important to be able to have that professionalism and show that you are someone to be taken seriously. Thank you. Um, Wendy, I wondered, is there anything that you'd like to share that the Career Center offers? Yes, definitely. So... Some of the resources that we have available in the Career Center uh, really help students find uh, internships. So, uh, Raina mentioned this earlier, so we have a career advising services, and uh, those are available to any KU student. Uh, they can help students select internships, find internships, do some career exploration. If you're not even quite sure what kind of internship you're looking for, uh, we can help you with refining your application materials, your resume. Um, you know, cover letter, things like that. We can also help you with LinkedIn. I think that was a service that Raina took advantage of. Uh, we can help you uh, get started or even refine your uh, LinkedIn profile, help you find people to connect with, help you create a, a, a message, um, and all points in between. So that's a great service. We're available uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Uh, we have 30 and 60 minute appointment blocks and we can meet with students virtually and in person. We're available in room 206 in Summerfield, so that's uh, some of the career advising services. And then another resource that we have available, we probably have the most comprehensive um, internship resources on campus for finding internships. So we have specific resources devoted to D.C. area internships. 
um, you know, such as in, in law and policy, congressional internships, uh, uh, human rights, um, you know, international affairs. Uh, so we can share some of those resources when you come in and make an appointment. Uh, we have an internship advising appointment specifically for that purpose. So I hope you take advantage of some of those resources that are absolutely free and available to any KU student. And um, just a little plug for our services, we also offer services to alumni too. So for, in perpetuity. So all KU alumni get services for the rest of their life. So. That's incredible. And I'll reiterate, we do have the Lacey Internship Assistance Fund. So if you go to our website, you'll see that for the summer and fall, the deadline is April 1st, and I encourage you to apply. Um, well, with that, we sh certainly had a fantastic, super impressive <laughs> uh, panel. So thank you so much for your time and giving all that great advice. I really appreciate it from you all. Thank you, everyone. I really learned a lot from you today. This has been a fantastic experience learning from you, and, and uh, I am just uh, delighted that I could spend time with you and learning about your experience. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone.